Hello everybody, Mike Brelswood, Brelswood Works. Thank you for joining me back on my channel, I appreciate it. Today, I'm gonna to try something I've wanted to do since I started making birdhouses, and that is to make an owl house. So I've got a great big cylinder ready to go, or uh, it's a 12-sided, whatever you'd call 12 sides, and I'm going to make it into a cylinder right now, and that's the first step, so let's get going. So I need to start making the parts for my owl box as far as the top and the bottom goes, and I'm doing those segmented. So I'm gonna start cutting material for my rings, and so I'm gonna start with the bottom ring. And I want it to be a fairly wide rim, so I gotta leave the wood fairly wide. So I'm gonna go with about a two and a half, inch, a three inch wide piece of wood, and I need um, each segment, 12 segments of three and five eighths inch each. Now I'm gonna cut the segments. I'm gonna change out my fence. I don't use a wedgie sled. I have my Osborne uh, miter gauge, which is extremely accurate. And um, you know, I've had super good luck with it. And so that's what I'm sticking with. Maybe someday I'll build myself a wedgie sled. segment to be three and five eighths long for this one. For those of you interested in doing segmented turning, uh, online there are many free segment calculators that are very good actually. So mark my three and five eighths. Set my fence.
Okay, so I've processed enough wedges to do uh, the rings for my owl box. And so that's what I'm going to put together now. I find it's easiest to put the glue on, line them up like this, and then just use my glue brush to <coughs> wipe it on. Try to make the top and uh, bottom equal number rings with just one more additional ring on the top because that will be like the rim. Yeah, most of the material here and then the rest is in one other container. So I'll work from the, I'm working from the smallest up. We'll do the rest on time lapse. Okay, so I glued up the top, all the rings for my owl house. This will be the top. Let me take it off the stand. put this on the lathe and try to shape it okay so I got the bottom chucked up of my owl house and I'm gonna shape the outside and then hollow the inside
Okay, now I got the top to my owl house mounted and I'm just gonna shape this and then hollow out as much as I can. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flatten uh, this side of the cylinder and then I'm gonna start rounding out the inside making it a little thinner. So I've got the body of my owl house right here. I've hollowed it as much as I'm going to. I don't have to make it special inside or anything like that. I just hollow it out as much as I need to just to remove weight and uh, smooth out a little bit. Uh, I left the bottom of the ring a little bit thicker um, because this is where I am going to install my the base and it's going to it's going to recess in. It's got a tenon that will recess inside here. And I'll put screws through the side in order to hold the bottom on. So the bottom will be removable in order to clean it. So right now, over on the Laguna, here's the bottom. And here's the tenon that I'm talking about. I'm going to put it on to my Laguna and I'm going to shape up this tenon. And I'm going to get it to the proper size so it will now fit into the base. So we're doing that now. First thing I'm going to do is open up the center and then I will shape the, I will size the outside. All right, now I'm going to shape it to, to for size. Start there and get a base reading. So try this. Base still a little bit too big for the body. So I'm gonna shave a little more off the inside here. Ah, there we go. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my uh, steady rest off and I take off these pipe clamps that were holding it because I had to I had a crack I had to fix uh, and then I'm going to put my tailstock up 
and I'm going to shape this down and and bring it in tight with the base. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shape the body down into the base and also work on this bottom, the very bottom of the base, get it so it works up into this piece because I'm going to leave this maybe just flare it over so it's more of a bead but this the whole body is going to taper down onto the base Okay, now I'm going to shape this bottom piece. Alright, so all I'm going to do is take this uh, little ring here and make it into a bead. I need to define it a little more though, first. All right, I'm just gonna make a little detailed ring on here. A couple burns, should finish it off. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up sanding all this down to its finished grit, which I believe I'm not going any further than 220 because it's gonna be outside, it should be fine. And I'll come back when that's all done. Okay, I've drilled a hole in the body to go through into the tenon of the base. And I'm just gonna put in the screw that I'm gonna use in there. It's just a, uh, a stainless Phillips head screw. Okay, so I'm gonna take my router and I'm gonna give this a little bit of a round over. Okay, I'm gonna glue the top onto the body of the owl house. All right, the owl box is ready. The top is glued to the, the body. All I got to do is shape this very tip, tip top here, which I'm going to do now. I'm going to make this into a bead and then flare this down up to the where the finial will then attach. That's all I'm gonna do for tonight. I'm gonna come back tomorrow and I will sand this up and then I'm going to dye it the colors that I want. Um, they've got to be subdued colors for owls and I've got my colors in mind. I'll let you see that tomorrow. Okay, so it's time to finish up the owl box. I've got it mounted. This one I mounted with two lag bolts. Uh, the people are gonna have to remove the bottom in order to mount this. And I, I'm gonna, if anyone buys it, I'm gonna suggest they get somebody professional to put it up 
because uh, it needs to go very high, minimum of 10 feet, but they prefer closer to 30 feet. So it's cumbersome. It's uh, it, it's going to require some some extra work because I got to put my my driver up inside in order to make it work. So you got to take the bottom off. It's it's just a big job. So at any rate, so one of the things I did with this one is I made a bottom uh, that will sit, so it'll be a flat bottom for the birds that'll be inside the bottom. It's made to sit, just sit in there so that it, if they need to clean it, they can just take it out and it's kind of wedge shaped so it'll sit in there better. I've also uh, marked the bottom uh, and the back so that it's, you, you can tell which way it is to be lined up. So let's get it screwed on. Line up my marks and drive it in. That's one. That's two. All right, all I got to do now is mount the finials. And I made the top and the bottom exactly the same. Here they are. As I've said in other birdhouse videos, I uh, assemble these with C medium CA glue and I spray the receiving end with some accelerator when I put it on. Well, there's one. And there's two. Now I'm pretty darn pleased with that. I really am. In fact, if this does not sell at these shows coming up, I might enter this into the North Carolina State Fair. Let's take a better look at it. So that's it for today. If you think you've gotten anything out of this, please click like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. Also, leave me some comments because I will answer every single one. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.